Ah, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Wild E. Coyote, super genius, as if you didn't already know by now. But the reason I am doing another vlog on this YouTube channel is because of another one of the many controversies concerning the current year 2020. I am sure several of you heard of the glowing reviews and success surrounding our new creator-driven revival, Looney Tunes Cartoons, on HBO Max. People praised the return to form with the writing and the high-quality animation and music and voice work. Even though so far they've gone back to having me be silent when pitted against the Roadrunner. I don't mind that. And so far it's not in any full length shorts, but they put me and the Roadrunner in short in between segments, not unlike what was done in the early Cartoon Network original animated shows. And with the music, it's great to have an orchestra go along with our antics again. Just like in the studio's glory years, or the Silver Age of the 1990s. This orchestra is also supposed to be working on the Animaniacs revival, due to premiere on, H on Hulu later on. And generally, they get the sound effects right, but there are still some nitpicks. Using these particular sound effect libraries a lot as if it were some of the 1990s theatrical intended shorts again, like the ones Chuck Jones did at his studios. A glaring example is the use of Hanna-Barbera's falling down whistle. It's just not the same as Treg Brown's classic falling whistles, and seems to bring back vibes of the late 1967 art era. Of course, if they hired Robert Hargreaves and anyone else from DigiPost TV to do the sound editing on these cartoons, then we'd get the proper falling whistle sounds. Like in the 90s Looney Tunes, Tiny Tunes, and Animaniacs shows they worked on, or even some spoofs of my classics during the 2000s, like when Beast Boy impersonated me. <laughs> You see, it's very simple, but Warner Brothers Animation seems to just want to use Digipost for the serious DC Comics stuff, not realizing the capabilities they have at doing a classic theatrical style Looney Tunes production. They even have some classic Warner Brothers sounds that are not on the Sound Ideas Warner Brothers library. But that's not really the big problem, my loyal viewers. What everyone's talking about is the lack of guns. Due to some recent tragic events, they won't allow Elmer Fudd and Yosemite Sam to have guns, like they often did in the classic shorts. Once a while, in a while in the past, they even let me use guns. <laughs> Pardon me. And this no-gun rule was also done with the Looney Tunes show, and Wabbit, a.k.a. New Looney Tunes, with a few exceptions. But even that wasn't as brutal as its sister series, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, which featured realistic and deadly firearm usage. Even Shaggy and Scooby were allowed to use guns. <laughs> Put it back, Scooby, or Fred Shaggy will throw a conniption. Anyways, that episode even lets someone get brutally shot to death. <laughs> yes, I know it was off screen, but that was still very extreme for a show rated TVY 7FV. And it makes the mind real on how they allowed stuff like that in a Scooby-Doo show, but not in anything with the Looney Tunes. I mean, the Looney Tunes show was rated TV PG, but for the most part it was very tame and family friendly, like one of ABC's TGIF sitcoms. With a few exceptions, as I pointed out, 
But in that case, nobody even dies. But then again, that Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated thing would probably not fly if you tried to make it today. But it's still not banned or censored in any way. Regardless, nor are the classic shorts at HBO Max that utilize guns, thankfully. And with that, the classic Looney Tunes are enjoying strong viewership on HBO Max. To the point where they're doing even better than the classic Disney shorts at Disney+. Plus. No hard feelings, eh, Zeke? Hey, even if I'm a Disney villain, I do want the Looney Tunes to get their chance back in the spotlight again. But yes, people think it would be not be right for Elmo Fudd to not have a gun, since that's what those old-time rabbit hunters often used to kill their prey. Instead, in one newer short, he uses a scythe. And of course, I also remember how Bugs Bunny's 51st and a half spoof, Blooper Bunny, poked fun at the gun usage as well. But that was back in 1991, before the tragic shootings and other terrible things I heard of in the news happened that led to the recent no guns thing for Elma and Sam. And of course, there are still explosions in Looney Tunes cartoons, which I often have to still encounter, but I'm able to survive after over 70 years of doing so. Compare that to the Looney Tunes show having virtually no explosions whatsoever, except for Yosemite Sam's house blowing up in the episode I mentioned where he complains about not being able to use guns. Instead, it was its sister series, Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated, that was chock full of explosions, to the point where it almost felt like something by Michael Bay. Yeah, even with all the explosions and violence, I have to agree that was superior to our Looney Tunes show complete with them getting their A-list talent, such as Animaniacs veteran writers, the properly skilled overseas animators, and the aforementioned Digipost TV to do sound editing. While our show got stuck with improv writers for the groundlings, sound editors that preferred Hanna-Barbera's effects. and the less capable Rough Draft Korea and Yearn Productions, the latter of which was working a bit on Looney Tunes cartoons, but got fired for looking not as fluid and slick as the Canadian and Filipino studios working on the series. And I have to agree, Yearn didn't do as great a job with my likeness. And they should stick with the aforementioned Canadian and Filipino studios, one of which, Snipple Animation, worked on Wabbit, aka New Looney Tunes, and their work looks so much better than the aforementioned Korean studios, for the most part. But now I'm losing track again, as the Looney Tunes cartoons are so far pretty successful. Even my cousin Ralph Wolf and his friend Sam Sheepdog got to be in the series as well, after being dormant for so long. And when they do a Looney Tunes cast shot, Ralph is usually excluded, even though Sam is with us. Presumably because someone at Warner Bros. might people might think that people are like, why are there two wily coyotes? Besides the species, the, the differences lie in our noses, our voices, and in most cases our eyes slurry. Plus, with Ralph, catching his prey is just a job, compared to me trying to catch the Roadrunner. <laughs> Also, with cable TV diminishing, the Looney Tunes seem to be enjoying a healthy life now on streaming services like HBO Max and the Boomerang service that started up three years ago, which does include some cartoons not on HBO Max and vice versa. Maybe this will lead to Space Jam 2 being a success. That is, if it even gets released theatrically next year, with this whole coronavirus pandemic affecting movie theaters. Hence, want a scoop feature film going directly to VOD services. And that is also now on HBO Max as well. But in preparing for Space Jam 2, <laughs> I even pulled out this old, old, if need be. I might even go to Anthro New England 2021 with its 1990s theme wearing this jersey, just for a little variety. And I also refreshed myself with some basketball practice. I mean, it's been almost 24 years since I played it much. 
Plus, it seems this is largely being produced for the nostalgia market. As many 90s kids have fond memories of Space Jam, even if I feel it could have been produced much better. And it was basically made due to the success of those Nike commercials featuring Michael Jordan, Bugs Bunny, and sometimes Marvin the Martian. Hmm. Well, if you think that's something, get this. Looney Tunes back in action. Had it not failed miserably at the box office when it was released, Warner Brothers would have actually gone producing another Looney Tunes feature, Skate Jam, to star us Looney Tunes skateboarding against Tony Hawk. <laughs> and I thought Scooby-Doo trying to stay relevant and with it with what's new Scooby-Doo during that time was bad enough. But of course, the failure of that in action led to Warner Brothers executives thinking hand-drawn theatrical animation is dead. And closing Warner Brothers' feature animation division after they had so many bombs, with their original Space Jam being their only financial success. But times change, and its successful successor, Warner Animation Group, seems to be doing much better financially with films like the aforementioned Scoob, along with those Lego films, and Storks, and Smallfoot. In fact, one of the animation group is where domestic production of Space Jam 2 is being held. And there was also talk one animation group is where domestic is where they're going to have me star in a feature film, where I finally sue Acme. Ho <laughs> that will be fun to make, as long as they get good writers and such. Taking advantage of my genius, but I guess that's enough vlogging for now. Farewell till my next vlog, and keep watching this channel to see whatever comes up. Wow.